Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. No. Um. <laughs>
trick you. You know, we want to embrace the format because you don't want the, in my opinion, when I hear a comedy song and the music is bad, I'm not interested. I'm not invested. I'm not connecting to it. And so we we want to really uh, immerse ourselves in that. When I say we, I mean me and the producer, Yusu Kim, who, who is someone I've worked with for a long time, who, who's brilliant at handling a lot of the musical side of this. You know, we want it to sound like, okay, is this a real country song? So then it's that much more effective when we pull them out from under you and hit you with that punchline. And the funny thing, you know, we'll talk about Low Stakes since that's the most recent song, is that, mm-hmm. you know, if you put it on the background, you can groove to it. And then you start listening to the lyrics and you're like, wait a minute, I have to rewind it because this is absolutely hysterical. Exactly. Right. So, yeah, if Low Stakes in particular has has that kind of that beat, that poppy feel to it. And, yeah, I, I would like it, you know, ideally if we if it found it, it's, its way on the radio. Right. So the kind of passive listening in your car, like, oh, OK, songs playing. And they're like, wait a second, this guy, this guy has dreams that are boring. That's what this that's what this song is about. That's like ideal scenario. Well, there's nothing more boring than dreaming about doing your laundry and then somebody else's wet clothes are in the dryer. Mm-hmm. Something, yeah, like the, like the name of the song says, low stakes. Not a big problem, can be resolved, uh, but maybe slightly annoying uh, if it, from your day, finding its way into your wildest fantasies at night. You know, those slight bits of inconvenience do add up, though. I mean, they are those first world problems that people will lose their minds over. Yeah, and I I can't reiterate it enough. I've had dreams about losing a receipt. Like it, it just, it's. I'm not proud of it, but it is my it is my actual life. So you actually dream about losing receipts, and you know the the annoyance of it because you can't return an item. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it really says something about uh, how deeply boring of a person. I am. And, you know, th- that's kind of that was the germ of this song was I would joke around with a friend of mine. I told him that I was like last night I had a dream. I needed a receipt to return something and I just couldn't find it. End of dream. Now uh, it doesn't escalate, doesn't go anywhere. And we joked about that a lot. And then he would share with me when that would happen to him. And then we were like, this is uh, this is very funny. Something has to be something has to be done with this very specific and stupid idea. So then I do have to ask making musical comedy because, you know, music is a type of seduction. Uh, What song of yours has like gotten girls or guys, I don't know which way it is for you, the most interest in you know, like, ooh, that song right there. You know, I'm a Joe girl at this point. Well, you know, I do have a song on the album that is in the style of like a Frank Sinatra uh, crooner song and so i feel like that one has all the trappings of like uh you know a classy like take my hand kind of song although the the turn with that one is that the crooner is having a uh psychedelic drug freak out um so very similar to low stakes where you're like okay, yeah, I get the groove of this. Wait, am I listening? This guy is freaking out because he sees the the reflection of himself in the woman's eyes. You know, there are people that narcissistic that would probably fall in love with themselves that way. That's, I mean, that's true. That's in that, that's an interpret, that's an interpretation of the song. In my, in my version, it's more just that the guy is uh, freaking out because he thinks he's in a prison inside someone's eyes. You know, this is Southern California, so either way, you know, either the narcissism or the soul sucking could do that to someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's all it's that's all part of this this freaky business we're in, baby. <laughs> you know, the the fun stuff is that you've pulled inspiration from like Robin Williams, Joan Rivers, you know, which Joan was never really the nicest person when when she delivered some of her comedy, you know, especially towards the end. But like, there's still that humor in her cruelty and there's humor in your music that you you don't necessarily pick up on because there's not that cruelty there but there is that robin williams aspect of going off into various tangents and tangents seems like negative i don't mean to put it in a negative context but like 
you know, you go off in, in these different directions that will like pull the audience in. So I commend you for that. Thank you. Yeah, no, I I always think that's an important part of uh, comedy in general, but especially songs, because the way a regular song is set up, you know, you got your verse and then you have your chorus and then another verse. And then typically you go back to the same chorus. But in comedy, you want to keep surprising people. You want to otherwise, like if you go back to the same chorus every time, it's like, I've heard this already. I'm not laughing. I know how this goes. I'm starting to get bored. So I think it's important to keep moving keep escalating whether it's a tangent or you're just building upon a new thing and continuing to tell the story that keeps uh the audience not only engaged but laughing and so that was i hope you see that with a lot of my songs is that they continue to evolve even if we're coming back to a chorus the chorus is going to change and be different every time is there an inclination to do like stephen wright is the king of you know monotone one-liners mm -hmm. is there an inclination to do like a stephen wright type song but with like mumble rap since because you, you know, talked about his a, breath so much it's an interesting idea i one of my kind of rules is to stay away from rap because it, the comedy rap has been done to death uh and there the the lonely island does it better than anyone and if i even attempted it i would only be a fraction uh of what they are able to accomplish so that you'll notice on the album there is no there's no rap anywhere and, and that was a very specific choice of like there are other genres that don't really get the comedy song treatment that i think uh are worth exploring well you know we do have to thank rodney dangerfield with no respect for the original comedy rap album rodney raps <laughs> yeah rapping it, rodney it's strange that i know that but you know, it's old, one of the so. more interesting, like little uh, pop culture uh, aberrations. I hesitate to call it the the fact that Rodney uh, was released a single where he was uh, rapping. That's that. I mean, that's funny. You know, it is Rodney Dangerfield, and that guy could do no wrong. So let's put it that way. Well, at least as a performer. Yeah, uh, I was going to say that's that's generous when talking about rap and Rodney, but you know, I'll respect one of the greats. You know. Um, when when you put out and when you put an album together you know mm -hmm. um it do you pick like the genres that you want to to go after first or do you start writing jokes and then go oh this would fit into an indie scene this would fit into a punk song this would fit into you know bubblegum pop and and so on and so forth like oh this one would be a great boy band song usually it comes from the genre first uh you know, because when you're just writing anything and you're just looking at that blank page, it's very intimidating, right? And it's very hard to just start from nothing and go to something. And so I, I, if I ever can, I like to give myself a starting point. So, for example, uh, with Low Stakes Dreams, it was like, okay, I should try to do a pop song. I, I think that would be a, a worthwhile endeavor for this album do something that that's catchy and uh and I thought okay pop song high energy um optimistic like when well, you start you start thinking about like what is it, pop bubbly and then what I tried to think was okay how can I make that funny I think immediately juxtaposition right you go from like this kind of positive upbeat thing all right I I need to juxtapose that with something that is mundane something that is ordinary and then that is what brought me to like okay i've been writing down these low stakes dreams of mine that could actually work i think the juxtaposition of those there's comedy inherent in that so often it's, it is starting with like a genre and thinking what's something that doesn't really belong here and that kind of gets my brain going and then, you know, with funny songs, you've had special guests like Patton Oswald, Al Madrigal, Nick Kroll, David Cross, etc. Um, when you bring them in to be special guests on there, do you go, did you pitch them which song you think they'd fit best? Or do they listen to stuff and go, you know what, I really want to be a part of this one? So uh, those guys are so you'll you'll notice the album is called Funny Songs and Sketches. That means there are sketch tracks on the album. And that is where most of the special guests are involved. So they're in 
you know, a, a scene or, or some kind of, uh, you know, parody or commercial or something that are not songs. And usually, usually, I mean, with with all the people you mentioned and all the guests on it, they were very cool to just go along with pretty much whatever I pitched to them. Because I would, you know, I wrote a lot of these sketches, not necessarily with anybody in mind. And then when I thought of who could work in them, I'd reach out and I'd say, hey, do you want to help me with something? And this is a testament to kindness of all these people who are on the album. A lot of them said yes before I even had to explain what they were doing. And so when we got to the actual recording, almost everybody, I had to be like, okay, so here's what we're doing. And they go, okay, great, great, great. And then we would just, we would go for it. And everybody was, was really cool and, and nice and added a, a layer of uh, professionalism, I think, to the proceedings that really elevates the album. And you know the the album's released by the comedy powerhouse Eight Hundred Pound Gorilla. Uh, to put it this way, what is your Eight Hundred Pound Gorilla? You know the obstacle that you need to overcome when you create a song or an album. That's a that's a great question. Um, you know, often it is to me knowing when something is done. Because and especially I noticed because doing audio sketches and audio and editing all this audio is new for me. My background is in is in video primarily. Um, when you're making audio sketches, you can continue to refine and edit and add new stuff and re-record and move this thing around and do that, mix it differently. You can get into such minutiae that it feels like it's never going to stop. You just keep perfecting it. And one thing I had to learn is like, we got it. Anything I'm doing from here on out is completely unrecognizable to the listener. I'm just too in it. And I need to understand when to stop, maybe take a step back, revisit it later, or just trust myself to go, you've accomplished what you set out to do quit adding tiny little things that mean nothing thing into it so what you're saying is you're the prince of musical comedy you said that but i won't deny it yeah because he did that stuff with the music too to the point that like i have a friend who's a music teacher and will sit there and go oh my god this song has the best finger symbols ever used in it i was like really we're gonna go to finger symbols at this point so yeah i mean it is i it, it's a common it's a it's a common issue with with a lot of creative pursuits is like you can keep tinkering with it i know the the guys who make south park they like to do it on they like to start seven days before it airs because they know if they give themselves too long of a leash they're just they're never going to be done it's good to have that deadline of like well here here's what it is it's going on the air and what do your deadlines look like then if uh, south park's got seven days i know right so i don't i don't really have uh i don't know if it's the luxury exactly but that's also that's also a big gorilla when it's like you know the label was very cool about like get this album when you're ready to do it and so you have to self-impose your own deadlines which is hard to have the discipline to do because you're just you you set a deadline but you also know it's fake you know it's not i mean you know that you set it so like you can break your own deadline because you made it nobody's going to get mad at you and so you have to i mean often involving other people like i mentioned yusu kim and daniel clark is also the guy who helped me record the sketches when you involve someone else there is just an inherent guilt that seeps in where you're like, I can't waste this person's time any further. And so that's the, my closest thing to a deadline. And sometimes together we'll be like, let's get it done here. At this point, we want to set a calendar by, you know, by March 1st, we're going to try to have all the tracks recorded on April 15th. We will have it all edited, et cetera. So you try to set these deadlines, but it is tough. So, you know, 60, 70 years later, we could still listen to Hello Mother, Hello Father and laugh at this camp song, you know, literally about camping and the kid being right. miserable at summer camp 70 years later. What song of yours 
from either this album or previous albums do you think will be sitting there 70 years from now and going yep that still resonates you know i think i we talked a lot about low stakes dreams and i have to i have to say i do think that is universal the the boring details of life i don't think are going to be going away anytime soon no matter where we are who we are when it's going to come down to the fact that we might think that we're more interesting than we are and that our our dreams will have fantastical elements to them but i think all of us deep down pretty boring individuals i can see that you know um i want to touch upon this since you mentioned that you played violin and your mom made you take lessons uh -huh. uh, one of the greatest comic violinists ever was jack benny jack you benny know? Yeah. have you ever had a jack benny moment where you know you intentionally played the violin poorly just so people stopped asking you to play not a bad idea it's been a long time i could probably steal that bit and pe most people wouldn't know i would be stealing it um but i don't even i think my violin is is stashed away somewhere in my parents house so i haven't had the opportunity to uh to commit jack benny theft but you know you've implanted the idea into my head so that's what I'm here for. So you're welcome. Aiding and abetting theft. Uh, you know what? Statue of limitations have far, uh, far exceeded the time limit. So I think we'll be okay. It's in the maybe public domain now. Maybe it's up for grabs. Right. So, you know, if, if people can steal jokes at, at comedy clubs, I think you can steal a 70 year old bit. <laughs> now we're getting, now we're getting into, into territory uh we have we have to do a official disclaimer we're joking yes <laughs> i i just saw a specific episode of dark side of comedy the other day so you know that's why that's coming up mm -hmm. it's in the it's in the brain <laughs> so with everything that's going on and you know you get to do these things where you get to use your musical talents and you get to use your comedic skills was there either a musician that inspired you a comedian that inspired you or a musical comic that you're like all right, this is the person that I got to look up to. You know, the first musician that I really loved was Weird Al Yankovic. Like, that is what got me into me. It took comedy to get me into music kind of in general. And I had all his albums and I was, I knew all the words to every song. And really what, when we talk about the inspiration for some of these songs on the album, a lot of it does come from Weird Al, but it comes from the non-parody songs. Most people know the songs that are making fun of other songs directly. Eat it and beat it, you know, like a surgeon and like a virgin, right? The list goes on. But the rest of these Weird Al albums contain what I think is a lot more interesting, these kind of style parodies. And so you'll hear a song called like Dare to be Stupid, which isn't a direct parody of Devo, but what it's doing is it's taking all the elements of a Devo song and then creating something new out of it. And that I, is something that I kind of uh, tried. You know, the Low Stakes Dreams isn't a direct parody of anything, but it does kind of sound like a... One Republic or Maroon 5 song, it sounds like that era of pop. Or, you know, I have a song called Ever Since that you listen to it and you go, this is reminiscent of the Smiths. It is not a direct parody of any one song. And I think that is uh, a much more fun playground is to try and capture the essence of someone with a, a completely new song, which is something that I believe, you know, Weird Al Yankovic is an absolute trailblazer at and, and no one really is better than he is right well the guy is a genius i mean he graduated high school at what 15 16 years old and college yes. at 19 he, he he sure did uh you know uh, god bless him and you do mention devo and uh you know there was an interview i think it was uh vh1's behind the music where mark mothersby said that he hated weird al for being able to do their style of music better than they could yeah t it was tongue-in-cheek yeah. but yeah he he uh, suddenly had a solemn look on his face and said i dare to be stupid is a, is as good any, as any diva song and i hate him for it and then he went on to work on rugrats and do their theme so nickelodeon paid him a killing 
Yeah, I mean, Mother's Bot, I and mean, that's a dude who has, you take a look at the credits of a lot of TV shows and movies. You're like, what we do in the shadows? Okay, Mother, Mother's Bot is involved in that. Wes Anderson movies, like he's, yeah, he 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 gets paid. Right. You're like, we can't get Danny Elfman, we'll get Mark. And I I think that is a, I think that is a fine trade. It, you know, it's it's the lateral trade. Well, yeah, I, they, exactly. You know, with everything that that goes about, and you know, comedy has inspired, musical comedy has inspired you into your own genre. Have you met Weird Al and told him? about your inspiration or have you sent him your album just to be like hey i want you to have this thank you for being an inspiration you know i uh i have i've met weird al on a few occasions very very much in passing kind of through mutual friends this was before i started making uh comedy music though so not since i've i've been dipping my toes in this water but uh yeah i don't know maybe maybe it, should I should I send him a message or would it freak him out that I have his email and he doesn't know it? You know what? That just add to the entertainment value of it all. Maybe or the restraining order of it all. Right. Yeah, but you never know. It's it's worth a shot. The you know, could be. I mean, have you seen his movie? You know, it's crazy I haven't. Um uh it's been it's been on my list for a while and like I told you I, I grew up uh, adoring him. It's kind of Stupid that I have not watched it yet. Uh, I don't. I don't exactly have Roku, but uh, I'm sure I could find it somewhere. Listen, I saw that. I rarely watch movies that quickly over and over again. And I think yeah. in three months, I saw it five times. Oh wow! Okay, what an endorsement. I'll, yeah, I really have to absolutely get on. Absolutely hilarious. It. Yeah. So because his life is mundane, and I think he exactly. You know, he... I mean, the behind the music you referenced is mostly a, a joke because there's no it's not like the story of of Finn Lizzy or or whatever there's there's no real drama I mean he's a very clean he, he subscribes to clean living he's a nice person he's he works hard and there's not there's not this roller coaster hill uh up and down of uh a wild dramatic career and so that behind the music is uh you know is is tame and and tongue in cheek and i think yeah when i like the idea of let's make a biopic but let's fill it with lies and th that kind of spiritually right for someone like weird al yeah you know, the one thing i would love to ask him is because he has an architectural degree did he design his own home Oh wow, yeah. Um I would guess not, but the yeah, is he is he putting that to use or does he uh a, a few a few tips, a few, you know, suggestions about how that goes. That's a, yeah, that's that's a very good question. You know, as, as everything progresses for you, you know, stand-up comedy and musical comedy, <clears throat> you know, uh, how do you go back and forth between the stage time of wanting to just do straight stand-up versus wanting to also perform the songs like do you split the stage time or is it like a different booking like one booking will be straight comedy the next booking will be musical comedy or how does that work out it really depends on how much time i'm afforded and where i am right so if i'm just doing a 10 minute set some at ucb i'll, I'll just do stand up it's easy don't have to worry about anything if i'm doing say you know i'll be in in pittsburgh on december 27th uh at a place called the club cafe and it's my show and um i intend to do an hour or so i will make sure i have my my setup with a with a guitar and my videos and everything because it's my thing and i get an hour and i can do what i want so i want to give the audience uh, a wide variety of of entertainment and so with something like that I will for sure do it. But, you know, if I'm at a venue, like if I'm just at a comedy club, I may be in, in Michigan or whatever, and I don't have, I don't want to bring my guitar, I maybe will think, okay, I don't need to burden this venue with tech. I can just kind of do my thing. Stand up wise. Sometimes it's that's what it comes down to is like, am I going to give a, the tech person a headache about all this, about like a DI box and a guitar and blah, blah, blah. Or am I just going to do stand up like they, like they see every week and let everybody be happy with their lives. And do you remember the first joke you ever wrote? 
or the first joke that got you a laugh? I used to write jokes on loose leaf paper and hide them under my mattress uh, when I was a kid because, again, it was it, it seemed shameful to to even think that I could be a comedian. One of the first jokes I remember being like, oh, this is connecting and it would be my opener. And this was, you know, when I was starting out is it was about I saw this video of uh, interestingly enough, it, it, it connects to music. It was a Rick Springfield concert and he grabs a phone from somebody in the audience and like he gets the audience going because he's like, hey, uh, I'm going to call Domino's. Hey, 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 uh, Domino's. It's Rick Springfield. I want to order 3,000 pizzas. And the crowd goes nuts. And then my joke was, uh, really, Rick? Three, like 3,000? Do you really want every audience member to have 30 pizzas? And that was that was like my kind of mean joke, but it, but it worked. I uh, always got a laugh. And now here I am, the Rick Springfield of comedy music. Yeah, until Rick Springfield actually sees you and is like, you know, that's not funny. Hey, man, <laughs> I have a loyal fan base and they love me. What do you have? Yeah. Well, you also don't want to pick a fight with a guy in his 60s. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see if, if we went toe to toe. Who's going to who's going to come out victorious? Because, you know, maybe I have the youth, but he's as he is the experience, you know. So, yeah. Well, Joe, it sounds like you're having a great time with everything and everything's working out for you. Uh, how do we increase the stakes? Oh boy, <laughs> do I want that? Uh, you know, well, well, what what people can do is, you know, they can follow me on on social media, and you know, if I get more followers, then the stakes do get higher. I do have to deliver. So, you know, I'm on uh, I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Joe Qua. I'm on Twitter at Joe K Joe K. People can subscribe to my YouTube, check my stuff out, and then. You know, if there are more eyes on this stuff, you can listen to the album uh, everywhere, you know, Spotify, uh, Apple, Amazon, Funny Songs and Sketches is the album. You can watch the videos online. More people watch, the more pressure for me to really deliver. Like, am I going to release a, a Christmas song soon? Dot, 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 question mark. Maybe. And so if there's a bunch of bunch of people commenting and liking my stuff, then I'll I'll really have to deliver. Well, it's been fantastic chatting with you today, Joe. Uh, your album is available, you said, right now on Spotify and all other uh, streaming platforms. What if we actually want to come to the show and get a hard copy so we can get an autograph? Where can we see you? Uh, yeah, so you can always check my website, joequazala.com. I put all my, my shows up there. The next big show, like I said, is in Pittsburgh at the Club Cafe on December 27th. It's a bit of a homecoming show for me. That's where I'm from, and you know, I always try to do a a big show in town when I'm home for the holidays. And so that will be it. So that's kind of the next big one on the books. Joe Quazala, it's been a great time chatting with you. Funny songs and sketches is available now. Uh, can't wait to come see you perform live. Unfortunately, it won't be in Pittsburgh, but it'll have to be somewhere here in Southern California. And I do plenty of gigs uh, around SoCal. So I guess I'll see you soon.